Um, so here's some news that I wasn't expecting to get today. Hello everybody and welcome to today's very exciting video because yes, that's right, we finally got an Entities 1.0 version, kind of. It's still technically an experimental version, but it is a 1.0 version nonetheless. So let's talk a little bit about what exactly this means. So with this experimental version of 1.0, basically it's a way that we can kind of get our hands on the new API, you know, get familiar with them, provide feedback and continue to improve them because it is still going to be changing because at some point they're actually going to be doing a pre-release version of Entities 1.0, which is going to be basically, you know, newer than this experimental version, but still before a official launch of 1.0 but there are many many breaking changes and all kinds of new things inside the 1.0 um, so lots of exciting stuff but lots of things are definitely going to break in our existing projects i know that from personal experience because well actually funny enough the day after that i'm recording this basically the video the day that this video is going live i was actually going to be releasing a full very extensive course about how you know how to create a full game in unity ecs um, just on this youtube channel here to everybody but unfortunately i'm going to be putting that off for now because basically everything that was announced today changes a lot about the kind of workflows and how we just kind of use ECS in general. So it really makes a lot of this stuff in that video pretty much irrelevant, which is kind of unfortunate because it was definitely going to be a, a very exciting and very extensive video. But I do have absolutely no shortage of awesome content coming to the channel coming up because of all the awesome new features and changes that were added to uh, this experimental version of 1.0, which we'll be getting into in this video today. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off with this forum post by a friend of the channel, Laranji Bear basically starts off just by kind of going over an overview about you know what exactly dots is and kind of the state of where it's at right now. Um, big news here again Unity ECS for Unity 2020.2 beta is available. So that's basically you know this experimental entities 1.0. It's going to be compatible with the Unity 2022.2 beta. And then again he kind of goes on to say you know the, the goal with this is to release the experimental breaking changes and ahead of the pre-release, the full pre-release version to gather feedback um, and kind of use it as an opportunity to adjust deliverables. So again, if you're very much interested in the success of Unity Dots and you're you know really into it right now, make sure you are continually sharing your feedback on the Unity forums because they are definitely listening and they are going to be making changes based off of that feedback. Kind of goes over, you know, what are some of the differences between what they consider this, you know, experimental and Entities 1.0 that was put out today and the pre-release of Entities 1.0, which is going to be coming out later, which again is different than the you know full you know production ready version of Entities 1.0. Did it make sense yet? So basically they're saying you know documentation is not fully complete. Um, I was actually going through the documentation earlier today and it actually is really good. They you know did a really good job of explaining all the you know new features and changes and everything like that. Um, but they say that it's you know still not complete. They do want to have you know more guides, manuals sample projects available so you know more documentation is always very much welcome uh, entities graphics gap with webgl so this is actually another change here that we're talking about uh, entities graphics is now the new name for the hybrid renderer package they say it's looking forward to uh, support the web gpu platform to leverage compute shaders however um, there are still basically going to give us options to now bridge ecs gameplay with the existing game object render pipeline to webgl so that's something super interesting definitely uh, looking forward to seeing how they do that another important thing here is uh, havoc physics is not going to be a part of this experimental 1.0 release but it is going to be available with the pre-release version of 1.0 um, so that is just one thing to note that it's not going to be unfortunately not going to be available with the experimental 1.0 release so here's something super interesting that i did want to call out so this says moving forward we reduce the emphasis on individual package versions and simply talk about ecs for unity 2022. it seems a little bit interesting because sort of the idea with the package manager originally was to break out specific parts of the unity engine that could kind of have their own life cycle and be updated on their own independent of the unity editor releases so this actually makes it sound like it's maybe moving back towards um, at least for ecs going to be more tied into the specific versions of unity so again this is something we'll kind of have to see how this plays out uh, but it looks like 
instead of calling this, you know, entities 1.0, this is going to be known as ECS for Unity 2022. It goes ahead and calls out the roadmap. There's some interesting things here. If you are interested in, uh, you know, kind of some of the things that they are targeting to improve, you know, feel free to read through this as well as check out the uh, updated roadmap page. They did update it to include some of the things calling out the ECS experimental 1.0. Um, as well as just kind of updated some of the other cards on here. So definitely go ahead and check that out. Now we'll talk a little bit more in depth about some of the features as detailed in this forum post by Matt Fuad. Shout out Matt Fuad, hope you're doing well, man. So as far as getting started with the new version, uh, basically they do have an installation and setup guide. It says it's compatible with the 2022.2.0b8 beta. Um, but there are some critical fixes that will be included in an upcoming patch release of the editor that we would recommend using as soon as they're available. So it sounds like, you know, we can use this for now, but again, it sounds like there are some issues that will be patched out in a new release of the editor. Uh, so notable highlights, let's actually get into this here. So a dedicated suite of editor tools. So this is, um, you know, pretty similar to a lot of the stuff that we got in the 0.50 release. However, they have introduced the new journaling window. So this is definitely very exciting. So entities journal Journaling is a feature that came out in uh, Entities 0.50. And this basically allows us to see, to basically track changes, you know, when we're adding components to entities, when we're changing values on them. And it's really just a log of like everything happening to entities in our game. It's really great stuff. And in the past, the only way that we could get to it was a little bit awkward. We could only do it through our IDE and it really wasn't the best way to interface with it, but it was still, you know, good enough if you needed it. However, now we actually have a new journaling window so we can actually look at these changes in a dedicated window in the editor. So definitely looking forward to diving into this one some more. They've also introduced the new data modes, which were showcased in the uh, GDC talk by Damien earlier this year, where we went over kind of the new editor windows and some of the new workflows that were coming to the 1.0. So those are finally available to us now. We do have kind of the new, you know, runtime as well as the authoring data modes where, you know, depending on where we modify values to a particular entity, maybe it's going to save those changes or not. So I'm definitely really eager to get my hands on these new workflows because because this is definitely going to fundamentally change, you know, how we develop applications with Unity ECS. And it's one of those things where it's like, I really need to kind of experience it to see, you know, how it works and if there are any kind of improvements that I think need to be made, or if it just kind of feels a lot more natural than the ways that we're used to. Um, they've also said they've re-engineered the conversion pipeline, which is now called the baking system. So this is kind of, you know, different in the past where we had like custom authoring components and the whole authoring workflow. Now it's going to be based around this whole baking system. And this definitely um, is another cool thing that I'm eager to get my hands on. We're basically, instead of making these authoring components, we make these baking components. And, and judging by what I've seen so far, it seems like the workflows are a lot easier to use. Um, support for the Unity build window is back. So in the past, we actually had to create these build config assets when we wanted to build versions of our game. However, now we can just do it again through the Unity build window. So that's going to kind of streamline it for the most part. And we've finally got the introduction of this feature called Aspects, where basically it just kind of provides a way where we can kind of combine components and interface them um, in one nice, easy way. Again, something that I'm probably going to be doing a whole deep dive on later on. But new improvements to the transform system. So they actually kind of completely overhauled the transform system. This is one that I definitely was not expecting at all. But basically, instead of having like separate translation, rotation, and scale components. These are actually all combined into one. It's called the local to world transform component. And basically from there, we can access the translation, rotation, and scale and all that. Now, judging by kind of what I've seen so far, it seems to be a little bit more wordy than what we had before, but because of aspects, we can now use a built-in aspect, which allows us to access these components a whole lot easier. So I do think that the changes with the transform system are going to be very significant, but with the aspects, it's gonna make them a little bit easier to use. Um, next up, they have introduce the idiomatic for each. So this is kind of a replacement to doing an entities.foreach.run um, where basically we can kind of use a more standard looking C sharp function to do these. Um, again, something I'll do be doing a deep dive on later. Now here's a big one, enableable components, which you may have previously known as enable bits, 
but basically this is where we can say enable or disable a component and if a component is disabled then by default it'll be skipped over in, a, in an entity query and from some of the things that i was reading it sounds like from their testing it's up to nine times faster than just using some like tag components um, they do say under the known issues here we're still working on making the physics and net code systems compatible with the improved transform system so i don't know if that means that the physics and net code systems just don't work with the new transform system it sounds like there is a way where you can still kind of enable the old transform system if you need it um, but i haven't gone hands-on with it especially with physics and net code to um, you know understand what some of the limitations are with that and then we do also have this form post from joe valenzuela kind of talking about some of these more features a little bit more in depth on a technical level i think this is a really great post uh, we can kind of see an example of the api of what it looks like uh, so this is an example of a baking component as opposed to say a custom authoring component so you see that we create this like baker class um, that has this public override bake method and then we can just call like you know add component and then we can just go ahead and you know add in the components and set the variables as we need. So I do think this baking workflow is gonna be really nice. Uh, the new transform system kind of goes into diesel on that. So here's an example of what the idiomatic for each looks like. So we can kind of get used to this syntax a little bit here. I'm um, talking about aspects. So here's kind of you know what we might've done previously. And here's an example of um, us using an aspect. So we have say this transform aspect TA. And then we can just say, you know, TA dot look at because, you know, I'm guessing inside the aspects, we do have kind of, some, you know, some functions in there that allow us to do things like the look at. That's very good stuff. Um, enableable components. Here's the enable bits. Basically, just on any I component data, we can go ahead and add the I enableable component. And then on here, we can do something like uh, set component enabled, where we can set a component enabled or disabled. And then again, we say if we do this uh, entity query, then it's not going to calculate anything with a disabled component here. Here they go ahead and talk about some of the changes to I system and I job entity. You know, really good stuff here. Definitely a lot more on that. And then here is the full change log. Um, as you can see, there are a ton of things here that were have been added, changed, fixed, and removed. Um, again, I'm not going to go through everything here, but just kind of want to you know go through some highlights here. Um, we see that, of course, we have the enable bits here. Oh, here's another one, the get component lookup. So previously, we had these component data from entities. These are now known as component lookups. So that's kind of a name change on there. That's kind of one of the uh, breaking changes for the new API there. Here's a super interesting one. Each system has an entity associated with it, which is used to store per system data. This approach should be preferred over adding public fields to ECS systems. I think this is really great. Um, it basically kind of allows us to not have data on systems when we really shouldn't be storing data on systems, but now each system has an entity associated with it that we can throw you know, as much data on it as we want. So I do think that's going to be pretty cool. Again, this is something that kind of dramatically changes our workflow and how we approach development in ECS right now. Here's one that's honestly probably not the best. Uh, chunks are limited to 128 entities per chunk. This makes enabled components faster since because v128 efficiently calls out the entities to process so this is kind of one of those things where it's like um, you know we do get this massive efficiency gain for the enabled components which i think is you know again a really great feature but that basically only means that we're now limited to having only 128 entities per chunk i know in the past i've had some systems that had you know like four or five hundred entities in a chunk but unfortunately it looks like that's not going to be the case and i actually did just pull out the calculator here um, to do 16 times 124 divided by 128 equals 128. So that basically means that, you know, if we have any entities that have under 128 bytes of data, that means effectively we're pretty much going to be having wasted space inside the chunk because we're only going to be going up to a maximum of 128 entities per chunk. So that is a little bit unfortunate. I do hope that, you know, maybe there's a way that we can manually set this or change this later on. But again, I do kind of understand why they do have to do it that way. Uh, iJob entity now uses iJob chunk for generating jobs rather than iJob entity batch. We'll be getting into why that is a little bit later on. Here's an interesting one. Systems now always update by default. So basically instead of doing, uh, you know, something like an update always attribute on top of a system, now it's just going to update always by default. Uh, system state components now have been renamed to cleanup components. I think that's a better name for them because that's pretty much mostly what they're being used for is, you know, cleaning things up. 
um, go check out my video on system state components if you want a little bit more information on what those are. So here's kind of a weird one. So this says the entity uh, iJob entity batch dot schedule granularity has been deprecated, but then later on it just goes to say that the iJob entity batch and iJob entity batch job types have been deprecated and will be removed before the 1.0 package release. So. Um, a little bit of unfortunate news, uh, iJob Entity Batch is going to be no longer. It sounds like if you want to do things a little bit more manually, you're going to be using iJob Chunk from now on. Um, do say that it has improved the performance of source generation while running IDEs. I know that was a, a major problem, especially with Visual Studio. Uh, fix some domain reload time issues. Source generated methods are now admitted as private. This allows ceiling for systems. Really good stuff. Uh, removed excessive stalls and IDEs that happen to due to Unity entity source generations running in the background while typing. And so anyways, I just wanna go ahead and real quickly just call out the documentation. Again, this has been fully updated for this experimental 1.0 version. Um, they go ahead and go over the upgrade guide. You see, again, talking about breaking changes, there are a lot of things that you need to do um, in this upgrade guide. I would highly recommend that if you are upgrading a project, read through this first because there are some important things that it specifically says to do before you actually install the 1.0 package, packages, specifically related to going from custom authoring components to these new Baker components. But yeah, so anyways, again, very exciting stuff. We now have an experimental version of Entities 1.0 out in the wild. Very excited to actually get my hands on it other than you know trying to upgrade an existing project and seeing it breaking. And, uh, you know, to be honest, I think I'm really just going to jump right into the fire, you know, Ludum Dare is this weekend and uh, really want to actually go ahead and make a project with the new experimental entities 1.0. And, you know, maybe I guess that might make me one of the first ever games made with <laughs> the uh, experimental entities 1.0. So anyways, thank you all so much for stopping by. Hope you didn't enjoy this little quick overview about experimental entities 1.0. Um, definitely have so many awesome things to you know dive into make cool videos about so really excited to all this stuff definitely let me know which things are you most excited for and which ones you want to learn more about in the comment section below um, and anyways with that i hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and i'll see you in the next one hey.